Trigger Spoons, Trigger Spoon Magnums, Trigger Spoon Pros, Trigger Spoon Juniors, Speed Spoons, Speed Spoon Pros. Looking for spoons for your trout fishing adventure? Think FHS Spoons. You can check them out at fishhuntshoot.com. immediately into the drag. I don't know how big he is, but uh, he's nice. Down about 12 feet on that fish. Wow. What a beautiful rainbow. Oh, what a fish. Look at that stud of a rainbow. Wow. What a beautiful fish. Incredible. Performance, economy, and rugged dependability. That's what my seven foot, six inch trout and salmon rods are all about. To get yours, Go to the Fish Hunt Shoot Productions store at fishhuntshootproductions.com. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. Do you see that fish tearing off drag? That is one of the hardest fighting rainbows I've ever caught. That fish was only about four pounds, but he was tearing off line, he was jumping, thrashing, he was, he was just making a general ruckus. If I'd have had my drag tightened down too tight, he would have snapped that 10 pound test floral leader like it was sewing thread. And, uh, you know, I kind of been thinking about that. I've been thinking about, you know, setting the table for success. I've been thinking about tips to pass on to you guys. And I think that is a very valuable tip. And I, I got a couple stories for you, I always do. But the bottom line is, let's cut right to the, right to the meat. When you set the drag on your rod, make sure that you err on the loose side. You know, you don't want to back it off all the way, but uh, you want that drag set well below what you think the breaking strength of your knots and your rig is. That's what the drag's there for. It's there to wear those fish down. Between the drag and the spring and the rod tip, you should never have a fish break your line. You should never have a fish rip out the hooks. Um, 
that's all about preparation. That's about attention to detail. It's another one of those factors that guys can overlook that costs them fish. You know, I host a lot of trips out on San Francisco Bay, and one of the things me and the deckhands always do at the beginning of a trip, we walk that rail, there might be 30 guys on the boat, especially when we're halibut fishing. We walk that rail and we check. We personally pull every drag on that boat, and you'd be surprised. I'd say one rod out of three, the guy's got his drag set way too tight. Now, we fish fairly heavily leaders out there for halibut, maybe 20 pound, um, sometimes 15 on the lighter side, depending on the bite, but uh, I feel drags on every trip that if the guy was lucky enough to get a big halibut, maybe the fish comes up, maybe we miss him with the net, maybe he just takes off for any, you know, any number of reasons. They got their drag set so tight that the leader would snap, or that tiny little hook would likely pull out. So just remember, if you want to land a maximum number of fish, especially big fish, those are the fish that really test your gear, err on the light side when you're setting your drag. And uh, here's another charter boat story. Um, it it, it kind of ties in with the light drag, but it also ties in with, you know, don't lose your head. So. We're outside the Golden Gate. This is probably, this is a long time ago. This may be 10 years ago, and I got a black bass rod, right? And there's some white sea bass around, and it's gentle on the ocean. We're down the south side. We're down towards, we're not all the way down to Half Moon Bay, but we're down that side of the coast. We've come out of the Golden Gate, and I'm on the Keldon. And uh, you, you saltwater guys will remember this. It was several years ago when we had access to the live sardines. For whatever reason, live sardines came in. There were sardines everywhere. We were using them for lingcod and halibut and everything else. So. We had guys on the boat fishing standard three-way rigs, and uh, I was hosting that day. I was helping. I was hooking fish. I was passing rods off. I caught a few fish, whatever. So James tells me, the captain, Captain James Smith, he tells me, you know, there's been some white sea bass around here, and we got the right conditions today. Why don't you grab your rod, take off all the weight, put on a live sardine, cast him towards the beach, and free line him up towards the beach. Now, I've never caught a white sea bass, and I... I still have it. <laughs> so long story short, I'm, I'm feeding that sardine line and sure enough, he's kind of in those, those gentle swells that are going towards the beach and he's getting way up there on the sand. And all of a sudden I feel thunk thunk, something's taking him. And my, my reels, oh, I don't even have it engaged. And uh, the fish takes off and I let him take a little bit of line and I engage the reel He's immediately into the drag. All right, I'm hooked up. This is a white sea bass, clearly. He's just smoking the reel. So there's just some, some random dude over here. This is one of the guys that's you know signed up to go on my trip, maybe win a prize, have a good time, meet me, meet the other readers of the fish sniffer and whatnot. So I'm like, hey, you, who, me? Yeah, you, come here, here, take this. He takes it and the fish is, fish is now way out there you know the drag set properly the fish is running and uh, this guy's not right on the rail he doesn't need to be because the lion's it's way over there and we're kind of standing back by the bait tank and I, I could see it like it was yesterday see this roller coming in and that big old silver sea bass comes up and he just starts thrashing on the top and he dives back in the water and he takes off and the drag starts to go. And this guy had his hand on the handle just like this and he was palming the reel. And when that fish took off and ran, he took his hand off the handle and he thumbed the reel with both thumbs. Pop, gone. <laughs> and uh, James says to me real quiet, he saw, I saw that thing. That, that thing was probably 50, 60 pounds. I was like, it, it looked pretty big. And he's all, if you hook another one, fight it yourself. Of course I didn't hook another one. And, uh, and I'm not trying to throw that guy under the bus, man. We all get excited, um, stuff happens. But the moral of this story is keep your cool one, but uh, that drag is there for a reason. That drag is there to help you wear down fish, cushion the fight, make sure your drag is set properly, err on the side of being too light, rather than too heavy, 
and you're not going to have any problems landing more than your fair share of fish. Don't be that guy that cranks his drag all the way down and then tells the story for the next 10 years about the big one that got away. <laughs> anyway, I'm Cal Kellogg having a little bit of fun here. I'm signing off for now. If you're looking for tackle, if you're looking for one of my signature series trout and salmon rods or anything else that you see in my, my full line of tackle, the stuff I use here on the, on the channel, go on over to the fish hunt fish shoot hunt productions website and uh we'll hook you up guys i want to thank you for all the uh, all the support over the years um we're over three million views we are having a blast here um you stay safe stay happy and i will catch you next time right here on youtube i'm kel kellogg and i'm signing off thank you guys <laughs> <laughs>